Howdy everyone, we got a quick video today about how to do muddy battlefield bases. More than just dirt and rocks, these are bases that looks like it just rained and the army has tramped through the area and everybody's gotten muddy and dirty. So stay tuned at the end of the video for a quick tip on how to use this texture paste with skirmish trays like these. And But now let's uh, get down in the mud with the pigs. So to start things off, what we've got is some miniatures that have been primed. Uh, we're going to use the Vallejo mud texture. So again, the base has been primed, which is important because this is a paint-based product and you want this to stick to the base. Um, on top of the primer, I put some dark brown paint just in case we get any cracks or we miss any spots with the mud texture. We don't want to see the black of the base or the, the white you know, gray of the primer. And with the junkiest most terrible brush you've got in your collection you're just gonna i like to use a brush you can use a skewer or a toothpick too but i think a brush gives you a little bit more control just kind of glop that texture on the base there until you get a nice thick reasonably even layer like so and then you're gonna let that dry this stuff does take a while to dry i usually give this like 12 hours 16 hours you know overnight sort of dry time um you're putting it on pretty thick and something about it, it just seems to take a, a good long while to dry. Now, this stuff is texture mixed in with dark brown paint. It is rough on your brushes. Um, I just can't stress enough, use a bad brush that you don't mind ruining. So you can see it on my thumbnail there, uh, it's a little bit transparent. It's not as solid as regular paint, as solidly colored as regular paint. It looks good over a dark background. But it also means that you can kind of smudge it on your miniature like so. You'll get a little bit of transparency that kind of looks like wet mud has gotten splattered over the figure, which is a fun effect. So on to the hogs. Um, with this thick mud here, I'll show you that, you that again. Um, I had the idea of actually adding some pigs into my regiment of Parabellum's Conquest militia just to make them look extra ragtag. The little metal pig models are from the assault group. You can see a little bit, I'm going to show you this one without priming the base, uh, dark brown first. It means you need to be a little more careful about fully covering up any light paints, which is okay. This has okay coverage when it's put on thick. Um, but just need to pay a little extra attention if you're putting it on over a light, lightly, light colored primed base, that you're really covering all that light. The little spot, you know, specks of white on the base are going to look weird. Um, so the same, same junky brush. Just kind of spread that mud all around the hooves of the pig there. It doesn't hurt to use your fingers or a little paper towel to wipe any off the edge of the base. Don't necessarily want that hanging out off the edge of the base. Um, and just nice, nice thick coat. And then if you want, you can actually uh, get a little bit of water from your water cup and add a little bit of water to that mud texture um, to make it even a little bit more transparent. Um, to muddy up the miniature. Now, if you water it down too much, you might start seeing the actual individual specks and granules that are in the, the mud texture. So you want to try to avoid that. Um, but thinning it down makes it look a little better when spread up on the miniature. So a little bit of mud on the legs, that sort of thing is a fun effect. Now, I thought this little pink pig would be a fun addition to the unit, but this exact same effect you would do for any sort of mud splattered hooves on horses, knights, whatever. Um, I think a little bit of mud effect, bringing the color of the base up onto the miniature gives kind of an in-action, disheveled look to the miniatures that I like. Especially when you're doing an army full of grubby humans. You know, maybe this isn't an appropriate effect for some fancy elves or something, uh, but for a, a downtrodden human army, I like it. So once you've got the let the top of the base dry, um, the Pro Acryl Black Brown is a really good color match for the sides of the bases for the, uh, the Vallejo Russian mud texture. Um, when dry, they're very, very similar colors. Um, as you've seen in any of my videos before, thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I usually like to paint the rims of my bases to match the darkest color that you're seeing on the base. So in this case, the Pro Acryl Black Brown is a great match for the Russian mud texture paste. Of course, having all the miniatures on the Jolly Lark wooden handles, link below if you want to order some of those, makes it quick and easy to do a big batch of models all at the same time. So 
once this texture dries, you do end up with kind of a matte look. So if you like the look of the wet mud, you can grab some gloss varnish of your choice. There are, there's lots of good options out there. And just put a, a thinnish layer of gloss varnish all over the mud to restore that kind of wet look. And you notice here, it goes on with like a teeny tiny bit of a blue tinge, which might worry you at first, but it'll dry clear, no problem. So actually, let me grab a model here that has had the gloss varnish put on and it's already dry. So you can kind of see it's got, it's got that shine back on it. So that's wet on the left, dry gloss varnish on the right. And you know, I'm honestly torn. I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments. I kind of like the wet mud look, but the, the dry mud texture, it, it looks pretty good too. And between the two, I'm, I'm really torn on which one I want to use for this army project. So the other thing you can do if you want to keep a, a drier look is to grab uh, some lighter colored paints. I like the warm brown from Pro Acryl and the light umber and give that dried texture paint just a light dry brush of a lighter color. You can go either way. The warm brown is going to give you a little bit more of a clay look. You can see them next to each other there. The light umber is going to give you a little bit more of a dried dirt look, but either one is a good option. You know, just a quick dry brush of one of the lighter browns on top of the dark brown uh, texture paste is really all you need to finish it off. Let's take a quick look at what the light umber looks like on top of the dark brown. I think I prefer that, um, but really it's just a difference of opinion, uh, whichever one you prefer. I think the, the warmer brown, the warm brown, uh, I think that looks good too. So whichever you prefer, but the two color, one color dry brush over the dark brown, I feel I think that looks great. If you want to go just one step lighter and give it a little bit more pop, you can mix in a little, little bit of like a khaki or bone color and give it another little dry brush. That'll up the contrast a little bit, which sometimes looks good on a big army project. I'd go very lightly with that and I'll give it a little bit more even of a, a dried dirt, kind of dried fields look like so. So as a final step, what I like to do is take the lighter dirt color, in this case, the light umber is what I decided to go with for the army, water it down a good bit, like four parts water, one part paint, and just kind of splotchily, splotchily, I think that's the word, splotchily paint on some watered down light brown on the, the bottom third of the miniature. Just like there's been a little bit of mud and muck that's gotten on their clothes, it's dried off. Um, and once that's dry, um, that the very wateriness of the paint has a nice effect and, and actually does look kind of like stains, which is the look you're going for. And that's it. It's a, not necessarily an effect I would use on a display competition model, but it's a really nice effect when used across a whole army. It's fast, it's easy. It tells a story about what the army has been getting up to before the game began, which I always think is fun. So thanks for liking the video. Thanks for subscribing. Any questions down in the comments below. And stay tuned for just a second. I'm going to give you a little bonus content about how to easily texture skirmish style movement trays. Okay, so here we've got a skirmish style movement tray. That is a movement tray that has circular holes in an otherwise square tray. You see this in Conquest, Last Argument of Kings, a game I've been playing a lot recently. You also see this sometimes if you're using round based models for a rank and flank style game. I think you might see trays like this a lot in Old World. And all I'm going to do is take some bases that match the size of the circles and put them in upside down in the skirmish tray. The bottoms of bases are always a little bit wider than the tops. They need to be uh, beveled slightly for the injection molding to work. So by putting the bases in upside down, it fills that round cavity without leaving much of a gap for the texture paste to get in. Um, and you can see I'm not putting on that texture paste paste very carefully at all. I'm really kind of slopping it on, um, but and I'm kind of making, trying to keep the edge, the square edges relatively careful, but I'm not worried about getting in the cavities. And then once it's applied all over that skirmish tray, I take these upside down bases. Well, first give the, give the edges a quick swipe with the paper towel, because there's inevitably a little bit of texture gets on the edges. Uh, you can use your fingers if you want, but that is enough volume, it's a little messy. And then I've got these upside down bases with a little bit of poster putty in each one, the underside of each base. And you just pop them out and it leaves a very nice clean uh, circle that doesn't have texture that you'll be able to let that dry and then let the models uh, just pop right in. 
it is important to take the upside down bases out before it dries because otherwise you can end up as i found out kind of gluing the bases into the tray but quick easy tip hopefully that's helpful and we'll see you on the next jolly lark